Okay, the New Calais City Meeting, City Council Meeting, Monday, March the 16th, 7 p.m. We're now uh, call to order. A uh, couple announcements before we do that. If you have a cell phone, would you mind turning it off or turning it on vibrate, if you would, please, so we don't. Uh, meeting, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, one other couple announcements I wanted to make before we get started. The shelter house here that we're in tonight, that's available for rent. So if you know anyone that would like to rent that, they just call the city building, which is 845-9492. And we'd be more than happy to try and set you up. I know the weekends are fairly well booked, but I think the weeks are open yet. One other thing, the Nicolau Cemetery has burial lots for sale. We have an extra five acres that we purchased quite a while ago, and they are in the process of clearing the land and so forth. So there are also burial lots. If you know of anyone that's interested, please let them know. Once again, call the same number. Thank you. And thank everyone for being here. We appreciate it. We'll now have a roll call, please. Mayor McLaughlin. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Zambach. Present. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Rick Lowry. Here. Mr. Craybacher. Here. Mr. Mike Lowry. Here. All members present. Thank you. We'll now have the invocation by Pastor Je Jeff Lindsall, the First United Methodist Church. If you would turn around the other way, we're going to use the flag in the back also when we get to that. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day today. Wonderful day for for seeing kids back out playing again, neighbors greeting each other once again after this long, cold winter. Reminds us of the joy of being of, in community together. And we come together as a community this night. We thank you for these officials, those elected and those appointed to be our leaders. And we ask you please to guide them and all of us as we speak as one voice for our community this evening. We ask for your guidance and for your protection. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Now the Pledge of Allegiance, we use the flag in the back. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'd like to work on the uh, action of the minutes for the regular meeting, March 2nd, 2015, please. So moved. Second. Any questions? Anything on them at all? Okay, Mr. Collier, if you would, please. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Pass 7 to 0. Thank you. Okay, we're now at communications. Uh, I need a motion to accept the resignation of City Manager Kim Jones, effective on 3 9 2015 at noon. So moved. Second. Give me a second here. Motion yes, by sir. Mr. Go Lowry, ahead, second up, by Mr. Reynolds, correct? Yeah. Was that Mr. Reynolds, were you the second? Yes. Okay. Okay, council, any comments? Any questions? Yes, sir, Mr. Mike. I didn't prepare a statement, so I'm gonna sort of speak off the cuff, but bear with me. Um, over the past couple weeks, a lot of things were said um, by a lot of us here on council and you know, I think sometimes, especially myself, and I'll speak for myself, a lot of times when you, you get in a situation with a lot of emotion, you don't take time to step back, take a breather, and look at the situation, see what's going on, and you end up speaking off the cuff. You end up speaking not as judiciously as you probably could. And I know that despite what happened or what may not have happened or whatever the story may be, Kim Jones cared a lot for the city. And uh, I understand that. I know that she did what's best as the city administration does, and all of us do here 
year to do what we think is best for the city. And we're really sad that it ended up going down this path. I wish we could have done things differently or started over or managed things in a different way. But it came to this, it's happened. And this is what Kim Jones wanted. Um, she had a decision that she, she obviously made that I respect that decision. And I think that, um, unfortunately, I, I will be voting against it except for resignation. From here on, I hope we can move forward in the future, find the problems, and uh, make sure that we resolve those issues and find solutions so things like this do not happen again. Um, in the city. So, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Zamboff, did you want to say something? Oh, I, I said it before, but, uh, Kim, Kim will be missed. It's a shame it had to happen the way it did. Uh, we <coughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Any other comments? I'd like to make, you have a comment? No. I'd like to make a comment, and I would like to thank uh, Mrs. Jones for all her time for the city. She spent 17 and a half years with the city and she had the welfare of the city in mind at all times. Uh, I'm, on, I'm on the same page as Mr. McIntyre. Mr. Zambach, it, it's unfortunate that it happened the way it did. Uh, I would like to read her letter that she had sent to council, if you would. Dear Mayor and Council, this was uh, March 9, 2015. Due to the hostile and political environment that I'm now being forced to work in, false accusations made by the City Council against my character and the unwillingness of the same Council to take responsibility for their own actions, I am resigning from my position as City Manager for the City of Nucleau out of the concern for my own health and safety. I will leave my City property at the City Building today and will be out of the office on vacation until April 22, 2015. As this resignation was preference of Council, I am assuming the city will not fight my unemployment compensation after my termination date. I will be available for consultation with city business if it is necessary for a negotiating fee. I regret this action was forced upon me. For 17 and a half years, I was a loyal, dedicated employee who loved the city. Sincerely, Kimberly J. Jones. Mayor McLaughlin, is it possible for me to get a copy of that? You letter? certainly yeah. may. I, I did give a copy to all council members. I, in their box enter, I want to enter it in the minutes. Sure I'll give you that forward. one. If you may have. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Council, any other comments? Anyone? Okay, we're not at. Uh, we have a motion on the table at this time, so uh, we should go ahead and vote. Would you call for the vote? Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Unfortunately, yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Pass seven to zero. Thank you. I will go on. We're now at the city manager's report. Mr. Uh, Kitko is our acting city manager. If you would, Mr. Kitko, please. Thank you, Mayor, members of the uh, council, members of the public. Um, I'd like to uh, jump down to section B, our finance discussion. Um, Ms. Harris will uh, give us our financial report. Thank you, Mr. Kitko, Mayor, council, and members of the audience tonight. I'm going to try and speak up as loud as I can. I know I'm a little soft-spoken. The February um, Financial report, our total revenue that we took in for the month of February is $375,615.97. Our total expenditures for February was $233,008.84. Our income tax receipts for February did rebound. We took in $123,663.59. That's about uh, almost 2% over this time last year. If you remember in the January report, we were way down. A lot of the tax returns were due by the 31st. It fell on a weekend, so they were actually receded in February. Total year-to-date income tax is $183,478.66. And something else I put on the front sheet, since we're still working on our temporary budget, I don't have a lot of the budget figures. The pages that are attached to have the breakdown of the revenue and expenses that I just um, 
talked about. But the general fund we had some comments about the where the hundred and ninety thousand dollars go, what we were saving on the sheriffs. I just took general fund only and put them side by side, the condensed version on this front page that shows on the budget that we're talking about tonight for 2015, we're, for the general fund, we're putting in, we estimate that we'll receive $1,353,978. And out of that, 93% of our income on our general fund is from tax. Tax, 72% is income tax, and that's why we talk a lot about it. We try to look at revenue sources to fund our general fund. We also try to look for expenditures to cut so we can stay within what we have. This year, compared to last year, our last year actual revenue was $1.4 million, $29,140. So we, are, we have $75,000 less that we're estimating receiving this year. So there's part of the picture. And, and again, you, it's a 42-page budget, but I'm just talking about the general fund. When we go down in the um, next two columns, the expenditures, when, since we cut out the sheriffs, the 190000 estimated from the two sheriffs, we still, for operating costs, sheriffs, for the council, for the manager, for the finance department, everything in total for 2015, we're looking at expending $1,392,005. Last year's budget that we were working on, we had $1,515,000 to work with. And you can see we've already used a lot of our available funds last year. We have worked and worked to try to trim anything we can and still cover our obligations in the general fund, which are mainly our debt and our services and our employees. So we are working on a asking for our 2015 budget. The general fund is going to be $123,000 less. That's because we cut a lot of that out of the police. There are other areas in the general fund that went up. The cost of workers' comp we talked about in our work sessions. Um, we still have some of the police that we paid in January when we had our three officers, and their rate is also higher than that. But between the two, basically, we have $75,000 less estimated revenue coming in for the general fund, and we did cut $123,000 out of it. So if that helps explain the $190,000, I'm, I was hoping that would you'd see it on paper. The rest of the report, we have the um, uh, letter from our tax administrator talking about the income and then the uh, breakdowns and the list of checks. So is there any questions that I can... Council, anyone have questions? Mr. McIntyre? I just want to thank you for putting the budget together in this way, having the breakdown. It's, it's much easier to go through and digest. Um, I know uh, uh, financial documents are not the easiest thing to go through and have a clear picture, and I think this breaks it down so it's easier for all of us to, to see, and also um, when we're talking with residents, we have the numbers, all of the, the pertinent numbers right here, especially with the general fund, which has been the subject of a lot of controversy lately. So I just want to thank you for this. Council? Yes, Mr. Lowe. Thank you. Only, yes. I do like this. It looks much better and it's a little bit more understandable than this. Is there still a lot missing out of this budget from what is that figure? Can you give me something to us? We have, um, on Mike's report, I wrote down the receivables at the end of February was 236000 and collected. That's receivables on the book. Okay. Um, we had 244000 But Mike offered to come in to help answer any of the questions on the taxes on
system where people come in or send a group into a city so they can come out and help collect or something like that. Do you need tools to do that? Is that correct? Or do you know anything about it? I have not heard anything. I'd be very interested in checking that out. Okay. Have you heard I, anything about it? I have not heard anything. Okay. So I will. has a collection process that I believe goes through the uh, state income tax office. They withhold refunds to individuals. Uh, and I'll have to check on that. And I will as well, you know, because I just heard this a while back, not too long ago, and I didn't get into a lot of detail with it. I find out any more, I will definitely let you know. Okay? Thank you. Mrs. Dinkler. Um, I have looked into that um, just as of last week, okay. and there are research resources that are offered by the Ohio Attorney General's Office. There is? There are, and um, I am in the process of putting that together, and then I'll be scheduling a meeting with Mike and Pauline to discuss what plans we need to be using for the city, but that's on the front burner. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah. Will you keep us posted as to progress or whatever? Sure. Whatever? Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Perry. Um, going back to the check register. <clears throat> go back to the check register under Time Warner. Can't they give us a better, better break than what you know? We're paying one, two, three, four, five Time Warner bills. Can't they? Is there anything that you know? It seems like it's crazy, you know, to pay five different bills. Can they give us a better break than that? We'll definitely keep looking into it. We did change our cellular phones not too long ago. Time Warner, though, we've got it at the police substation and the fire station, so um, I can definitely look into that. I think we get a franchise rate since our franchising um, company that we have, and I believe we get a, a lower rate already. Now, because we have five, I'm not sure if it's lumping it into one bill, making it a little bit cheaper, but that's something to look into. Well, bundle, I guess. <laughs> the commercial bundle, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> the commercial. Um, I like this page. You know, I don't know if that's... Yeah. Is that from the new software? Actually, that was one that we worked with, I gave to you back in June, when we were estimate when I was asked to estimate what our ending balance would be in 2000. <coughs> 15. Okay. Um, so it's on our Excel spreadsheet. We um, put together the the totals from the end of 2014, our actual, plus the budget that we're asking the Dow tonight. And it is easy to go straight across and see what balances we're spending more in, what we're spending less in, what we have to carry forward, what maybe we're using and not. Yeah. A lot of people can't see it. It, it. It's a lot of numbers, a lot of columns, but you know, it's pretty thorough. It's really thorough. It's almost like a checkbook at home if you really want to follow it. So if anybody has a checkbook in anyway. Anyone else? Any other comments? I have one. Um, the number of $195 that the city would have uh, at the end of general budget, they worked on it, cut a lot more things. We are now at $14,414. And 47 cents. That's what we're looking at. That's the general fund. There are other funds that are much bigger than that, which would be like wastewater, water. Uh, the others would be uh, fire department and emergency services, cemetery. Those are ones that no money can be taken out of them, but money could be put into them. So again, the general fund, which is re really just for wages, and also uh, to transfer money, we are in the black $14,414. And that's the budget that we're looking at to pass the seat. So I wanted to let everybody know that. Again, any other comments? Anyone at all? Um, I didn't know we were supposed to be talking about the budget. You know, that's, you know, I thought we were going to wait to the ordinance for that. But however, um, you you know, Colleen, you and I were talking and we were, we were pointing some things out. And one of the things you talked about was the enterprise funds, the wastewater and everything, that, that, that they might have to be some adjustments in them because there was like thousands of dollars of, I'm going to say 500,000. There's a difference between last year and this year. Is that correct or am I? 
I think you're talking about the ending balance and the total yep. expenditures from right. last year. Right. Yeah. That's. I said, well, that sounds like a big concern. It was like a 50 percent. You know what we were talking about? I, I know what he's talking about. John, we went through all that. I was over three times. That $300,000 is going in the streets. So half, more than half of the $500,000 you're talking about is going in the streets this year. And I think Mr. Kitko can tell you on that as well. But we went over there, all the figures, and uh, I've got a readout here of that. As a matter of fact, here's everything that you're mm -hmm. looking at. Uh, streets, 300596 This is the difference that he was just talking about. Uh, salt and uh, State Highway, 19238 Emergency ambulance operation, 70000 Fire capital equipment, 58000 Fire operating, 30000 Water, 58810 Wastewater, 35749 And water capital improvement, 46220 which is actually $619,519. So that's money that they're planning on putting into the city. So that's why it's dropping down at 500 and some thousand. Does that explain it to you? No. Okay. We went over all that this last week. Okay. Mr. Kitko, did you want to say something? I just want to add, um, on, as far as income taxes, we pulled up an ordinance that um, states how you can kind of keep track of the landlords and the tenants. We do have an ordinance that uh, states that when they have tenants move in or move out, that they um, let the finance director know directly or indirectly to file. The problem is mo some of the tenants have, well, when the tenants have the water in their name, they're coming in to turn on and turn off. So we know when tenants move or um, come in and out. When the landlord has the water in their name, they could have tenants come in and out. So then it's on the honor system for the landlord to tell you that they had someone uh, occupy that residence and then leave. So they could literally rent the place out. Um, you don't even know they're there, leave because uh, the water wasn't turned on or off in between. So someone could, uh, you could have multiple people moving in and out of a landlord's place when the water is in their name. The, the reason the water in the tenant's name, you just know because they're showing up at the city building to have services uh, connected or disconnected. So the other way is the honor system. So, But there is ordinances in place to um, help for income tax collection purposes um, for that. Thank you. Council, anyone else? Okay. If you'd like to go ahead, Mr. Kitko. Uh, under service discussion, uh, we have just a couple projects now that winter's breaking. We're going to try and finish up some that we had going on in the fall. Uh, we got to finish up our sign project, and the whole city will be completed with the 2015 mandate, 2015 or 2016 Federal Highway Administration mandate for high ref reflectivity signs. Um, and then uh, so hopefully starting next week, we will get um, the Dura Patcher back up and uh, ready for the season. Hopefully starting Monday, if not be a little bit later. And we also are going to try and work a little bit more on our tree work. We get some done this winter uh, through the early part while there was no snow and uh, um, frozen ground. But then now it's pretty much uh, everything's muddy. So we had to put that on hold. And we are staying on the main break holes at Main Street and Jefferson, especially almost daily right now. Um, as soon as asphalt plants get open, we will get in there, try and compact it, make sure it's tight, and get those uh, paved um, as soon as the plants are opened up. And the meter um, installation project, we are down to probably, I think we're at less than 200 meters, at, and those are counting vacants of, I think we have like 60 or 70 um, vacant properties that haven't had their meters changed, and then the rest we're just working on. Um, but my normal shutoffs that we've had to do for non-compliance have only been nine or ten um, in the two shutoffs we've had. So it's been uh, everyone's complying uh, with the phone calls, door tags, things like that. Um, as far as service discussion, that's all I have. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, Mr. Mack. Uh As far as the salt for the streets, I know that was a, a big issue. We were worried about both supply, how much we're going to spend on it. Did, did we come under budget with that, or what we projected, or how do we end up doing? I, that's as you know that we don't have any more snow. So. Um, we ended up getting down to about 30 ton left in the barn, and I went out and procured more salt at 130 dollars a ton. I only got 50 ton because uh, I wanted to make sure we got through. Well, we ended up using probably about 20 of that, and now we're we got almost three quarters of a barn full. 
So hopefully going into this bidding season, it'll be an expensive salt that we're holding on to, but hopefully we don't have to get as much for this next year. But um, we, I didn't want to run out, that's for sure. Right. Would you let everyone know how much we were paying last year, how much it's gone up in salt? Last year's salt was 65, I think, a ton, somewhere right I there. I heard 60 something, 71, yep. somewhere yep. in that area. It's more than double. Yes. Um, on to uh, D, planning and zoning discussion. Uh, Mr. Bridge, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kiko. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of uh, the council, uh, members of public, I'd like to share with you the planning department activity for the month of February. Uh, as you can see, according to the graphs, given the time of the year, uh, January and February is kind of low on code enforcement activity, just given the, the state of the, the uh, weather. Um, but you will definitely see a spike in that coming March and April. Said I'd like to discuss the ordinance of the month, and that would be 146325. We're driving around the city today, and we noticed quite a few of these uh, just to inform the public and those watching at home on YouTube. Um, the ordinance reads no junk and operable licensed vehicles located on any residential property except when stored completely within a closed building. Closed building is a garage. Um, definition of a junk junk or an operable vehicle it is one that is without valid current registration or a license plate, a, a vehicle that is apparently inoperable, a vehicle that is without fully inflated tires or has any type of support underneath it. Uh, the vehicle has substantially damaged, damaged or missing window, windshield, door, motor, transmission, or any other similar major part, or is incapable of being mowed, uh, moved under so keep that in mind if you are outside uh, doing some work and you maybe notice a neighbor too that has an opera vehicle in, in their yard, do not hesitate to give the city building a call. You can re report those anonymously. Moving on, uh, New Carlisle is open for business. For those of you who have a packet uh, in the council member, you may see that this is on a separate, separate piece of paper from the actual. I kind of want to give this thing a, a, a new look again. Um, for every one that we do, for every property, vacant building, we're going to do a sheet like this. Basically, what's on this sheet is information that is really important to a potential tenant. How big is the building? How big is the building? Does it have a loading number? These are all things that a potential tenant would look at when they're looking at maybe moving their business into your town. We also have an aerial photograph of the property as well with the entrance and exits. And then out the bottom is the boring stuff, the permitted uses, conditional uses, the zoning stuff. Um, this will now be on display in our city building each month. I'm going to move, move uh, some things around. So anybody that comes in that may want to take a copy of this to pass along to a friend or a developer that you may know, these will be uh, available at the city building. And then again, this is a great, great tool to have. Uh, so please, if you know anyone, to take advantage of that. Some miscellaneous uh, information. We have got a few prospective new businesses in town. Um, a print screen and retail shop is in the works of going in the Studebaker Service Center, which is a shopping plaza that is across the parking lot from Studebaker's. He is going to do screen print t-shirts, but he also is going to do some woodworking that he's going to do in an off-site location and then resell all those products at his retail store. So when he does open, make sure we stop in and say welcome to New Carlisle and thank you for relocating your business here. We also have a new landscaping business in town, and that is CRF Land Management. They are located at 294 Brubaker Drive, and that is the industrial plat that is right uh, next to Fat Metals. Uh, Jet Mechanical, um, we're still waiting on the, the ins and outs on this one for, you know, um, as far as the, the bank and the cell of the building. Uh, but it is a heating and air conditioning business and is located at 225 South Main, and that is the building uh, next door to CVS. And then we also have the QD Pie Cupcake Cafe. And, to be honest with you, I'm not sure of the specifics about this particular business because I have not been able to get a business owner. But they will be located at 116 West Jefferson Street. That is the corner of Jefferson and Church, and that is where the uh, AIDS Hidden Treasure used to be. Um, so we would like to welcome all these all these businesses in town, and I will be sure stopping at the Cupcake Cafe to grab a cupcake at some point in time. Um, Taco Bell. Uh, a lot of people have read in, in the paper that Taco Bell may be coming down to Park Lane. Well, I was a little aggressive with their developer, and I also was a little aggressive with Taco Bell corporate out California. I think the city of New Carlisle deserves that Taco Bell over Park Lane. So I have sent 
oodles upon oodles of information regarding uh, the business area, the business Since I have checked up on it, the last I heard, they were waiting on Coke to give a yes or no as if Coke would pay for the paint. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll have to get with uh, Dave, the guy, the gentleman who's really spearheaded that whole project, and, and really get an update with them. That'd be about that time of the year. So. Yeah, I mean it makes sense if they are waiting. They're not going to start that project in the winter. They'll probably wait to the spring. For those of you don't know what we're talking about, at one front of the board of zoning appeals last year, uh, the old water bed, the water bed store downtown. They want to put a Coke mural, and I do believe it was already painted there at one point in time back in the day, and they're going to just re-put that back up. It's a great mural. I have pictures of it, so if anybody wants to see that, stop by my office. I'll be happy to share it with you. Yes, sir. Randy, you spoke, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, you spoke about trying to get Taco Bell and move on our and Park. I appreciate that and all the work you get on. Where would you think they would be located? Well, Taco Bell historically likes lighted intersections. If you look at their site plan that they have online for potential development, new development, they like lighted intersections. Um, so, you know, we've put a few spaces out there. One is the obvious, which I'm not too comfortable to say right now because I don't know that company's long term. Okay. Um, but you do have space in mind for them. Oh, there's three okay. or four. That's yeah, all. I'm absolutely. Using. Sure. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Sorry. I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Um, okay. We had a, uh, a couple months ago, you mentioned that there was a website through which um, government entities could put parcels of land that they have that you may want to open up and start a business. I know you, you and the mayor have been very aggressive with trying to get new businesses here in town over the last few years, um, doing things like highlighting parcels and putting what you have. Have we gotten any feedback from that website? Can you give us an update on and, and, well, what it was for people who don't know? And then it's, it's an online database. It's really a tool for economic development and with any kind of database or, or things that require steps of approval. You know, it's, it's a three-tier approval process. I put all the information I, I put in as far as vacant buildings in town, vacant parcels of land, acreage, um, very similar to actually what's on this as far as what's important to the tenant. Well, then it goes to uh, uh, the Clark County uh, out of the uh, Horton Hobbs, and he's out of the, the um, spoken fast, I'm Chamber. sorry, Chamber of Commerce. You know, he has to review all, review these, and then it gets, approved to the next level. Um, I think half of the ones I put in at this point have been approved, so they are viewable to anybody who wants to view them, um, but we're still waiting on some other things to get done. They're really particular um, with how you input the data as far as special characters, you know. Um, so you could theoretically put everything in and not know that it hasn't been accepted for a while. So, you know, and I, I can log back on there and see what ones are good or bad. The last time I checked, about 50 50 was approved. But it is a great tool. You know, like if you're looking to locate your business in the state of Ohio, you go in and pop in your criteria, and everything that matches your criteria shows up in your search results. So it's really a way to go find a needle in a haystack. It is. You know, but, and then, then it gets into um, Date Development Coalition. They're the third party who has to say in this, so it, there's too many hands in it at some times. Um, but like I said, for the most part, about 50 of them, percent of them have been approved, so they are visible. Um, but we can revisit it and try to get that spark to get the other half. Sure. sure. Thank you. Yeah. Someone else want to speak? We're here. 
Mr. Zambit, no. Mr. Reynolds, no one else? Thank you very much for your report. You're very thorough. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Okay. Uh, we'll move on down to uh, E, fire discussion, uh, Chief Phillips. Thank you, Mr. Gitko, Mr. Mayor, members of council, <coughs> citizens, and an overwhelming number of guests in the audience. Um, for the month of February, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to a combined total of 95 calls for service. Fire responses totaled 16 with an average response time of 8 minutes 42 seconds. The division responded to 79 emergency medical calls of service with an average response time of 6 minutes 12 seconds. Some Elizabeth Township statistics. Elizabeth Township Fire and EMS responded to a combined total of 12 calls for service during the month of February. Fire responses totaled 1. Emergency medical responses totaled 11. There were 5 responses within the Elizabeth Township, 3 to the village of Castown, 3 responses to the city of New Carlisle, and 1 response to the city of Troy. Uh, as far as significant events go, uh, February was kind of a quiet month for us, except right there at the end. Uh, our crews responded in Elizabeth Medic 3 in Detroit to the uh, well-publicized uh, carbon monoxide problem they had there with the three fatalities. Uh, <clears throat> our crews worked uh, diligently with the, Croy, the Detroit City crews to try to save uh, the, the patient they had, but uh, alas, it was uh, unfruitful. Uh, they did, again, have the three fatalities. And that uh, dovetails into my safety message there. Uh, a lot of times when people think about carbon monoxide, they think that it's only a winter problem, and that's not necessarily the case. We just hear more cases in the winter because everyone's got their heat, the furnace fired up and things like that. But anytime you have a, a appliance in your home that operates on natural gas or propane, you're at risk for CO. So make sure you have a, a working CO detector and it's in a proper location. Um, other than that, I have nothing else. I'll entertain any questions. Mr. Reynolds. Uh, Mr. Phillips, I have a quick question. Uh, when is the contract up for Elizabeth Township? Is the renewal this year? It, uh, June is when we renew this June. Right. Just want to double check. Thank you. Right. Anyone else? Yes. No, no vacancies at this time. No vacancies in fire department or ambulance EMTs, paramedics? No, we've trimmed the staff back to about 44 and we keep a pretty good schedule most of the time. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, I've received several complaints that people are leaving the fire department. We've got no vacancies in yeah. Not true at all. Okay. Our schedule stays full. captains or might have been you chief and that walked in and says if you're talking to city council you might have to find another job and somebody posted a mcdonald's um job announcement up there and said you can work there next time no that's not true either. <laughs> that's what we've been hearing on the street so okay and it's been a very reliable source i just, I just well we'll do our best to clean it up then but I don't think those statements were made inside the fire department. And if it was made, it was probably outside by someone who knows. But there's been a lot of comments made about the fire division. There's a lot of, uh, I would say there's still a small group of folks that believe that the fire division can be operated as it was in the 70s, 80s, or 90s, and that's just not the way that we have to do business these days. We have to maintain a, a progressive stance. We have to keep the division moving forward. That's our main focus. That's the focus of our training program. That's the focus of our budget. So there's still some people, a small group of folks that aren't that comfortable with moving that quickly, but that's the way we have to be. We have to stay up on the current ways of our operating our business to fight fire the correct way, to provide emergency services the correct way. We just have to stay progressive and there's a lot of, not a lot, but a small group of folks that are still a little bit resistant to that. But. You know, We're I'm, winning them over slowly, I guess I would say. You know, I'm all for safety. Sure. For keeping the citizens safe. And I want to make sure that the manpower, you know, they have low morale. They're not going to, they're not going to come to fight the fire in a good good attitude. You know, I'm, I know from people from Apple Township, you know, they, they talk about our attitude, you know, being up. 
I just want to make sure it stays up. Yeah, yeah, we, we do our best to keep it up. I mean, we have our down days, depending on what the call volume is, things like that. And you got to keep in mind, everybody that works for the fire division, uh, a, a greater majority, myself included, work in other departments. So they bring a lot of knowledge. Some departments operate differently than us. Sometimes it takes a little bit to meld those folks in, but we do, we do a really good job trying to get that done. I'll just jump in line here and give my two cents. I, you know, we have all of our festival meetings in the firehouse. We film our videos up there and I've heard the complete opposite. I mean, I talked to a lot of the younger guys and, and more or less, they tell me that they're happy. Everyone, the equipment's great. Everyone gets along. So, I mean, take that for what it's worth as well. Well, and, then, and what drove my comment about the 70s, 80s and 90s is that there's a lot of hope that we can run a department with paid for call folks all the time and that hope is not a strategy for me we have to have a solid group of folks that are going to be on shift taking the calls i would love to have 30 or 40 paid for call folks but in today's times it's incredibly difficult to keep those people on staff because of the enhanced training requirements the time that i require them to be in the firehouse to train and do whatever else it's just it's it's a it's a fair to handle. I have a smaller group of paper ball guys than what we had say five years ago, but we do our best to keep those guys happy as well and engaged in the fire service in the firehouse within the division to make them feel like they're part of the program. And it's it's just a really difficult thing to manage for us, but we do our best. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. You had something. How many fewer people do we have now than we did before you had started? Uh, we're down about nine, I think, nine or ten. A lot of people. Uh, and my next question is, you said you don't want to count on false hopes. What if, this is if though, we lose the Elizabeth Township contract, are our fire funds going to be okay? I mean, Yes, fire funds will be fine, it's just our employees won't get as many hours as they get now. We'll, we'll still, but we'll still be covered. Oh, sure, okay. sure. Yeah, we'll stay sustainable. We have a solid schedule in town and, and in Elizabeth Township, so. All right, just want to make sure. Anyone else from the chief? Yes. Yes. I'm confused. Sure, go ahead. I asked you where there are vacancies. You said no. Ethan Reynolds just asked you a question, and you said you had nine fewer people than you did a while back. Please explain. Right. There's, they're not really considered vacancies. I just have nine less people. We don't have a, a real firm number of staff. Do we have, have the people you need, Chief? Let's put it that way, okay? We have 126. Do you have the people you need? We have plenty of people that we need. Okay. So if you're not hurting for people, I am not. you're not sending vehicles out without the proper amount of people. Correct. Okay. The only time well, Sometimes that, you send them with two men. Yeah, thank you. But the, the only opportunity for that to happen if a vehicle is out with one person on it, it's usually a second medic. Well, I, you threw me with the vacancies. I, okay. I, I don't really have a solid. Okay. And my question is, is, can you legally actually pick someone up in the, uh, eat in the ambulance with one person? Don't you have to have two? No, you cannot pick them up. So one person out. Would you typically want to call the mutual aid first because if we're going to understand the mutual aid company is dispatched the same time our second medical is dispatched. I, I would just interject here. I mean, sure. Standard operating procedures when you're calling for legal questions and, and this yeah, is following it. SOPs. And if there's that one, one man operation can't go out and wait for the other and have a seat clear to be safe then for them to then enter. But if they sit in the vehicle. They're not that sitting in their vehicle. Can they do anything to that? Sure, sure. They're, they're, they're first responders, what we call them. They respond first, provide aid to the mutual aid company. Assuming that there isn't a, a threat of a criminal situation on the standard that if there's any sort of threat that could potentially harm the environment or the EMT, they can wait until the police officer can hear it. Thank you. Anyone else? Chief, uh, real quick, your funding, could you just let everybody know where your funding comes from and also how, how is your funding at this time? And I know at the 
this time you, you have actually four individuals for the EMT that are on 24-7, is that correct? Correct. Elizabeth Township as well as New Correct. So you have four people 24-7. Right. So if you would, where your funding comes from, how the fire department EMS is funded, EMT, I guess I should say, and also uh, how, how's your funding at this point? Is it good, bad, and different? Well, we have, we have four individual levies. We have two operating and two capital. We have a fire operating a fire capital, EMS operating EMS capital. We also have the contracted price from Elizabeth Township, and we also get uh, billing money from our EMS billing system. Um, right now, we finished the year pretty strong last year with quite a bit in reserve. Um, we, we made all our capital projects that we wanted to make for the year, so we we're looking pretty good. This year's is gonna be about the same. From our evidence, uh, review from Ms. Harris and Ms. Jones, we left. Thank you so much for your report. We appreciate all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, move on down to uh, F Police Discussion, Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, Mr. Kitko, Mayor, Council, Citizens. For February, reports taken by New Carl deputies at 41. A regular our county deputy took nine reports. That left 30 reports for the city. We patrolled 1,232 miles, seven miscellaneous calls, and seven follow-ups. The traffic information, 49 traffic stops, 59 citations, two OVIs, two arrests, and four OVI charges. Under suspension, there was 26. We issued a parking citation. We had three non-injury accidents. Under arrest information, there were um, criminal adult arrests. There was 12. Uh, actual people were arrested on 13 charges. We did not have any, and we had seven warrant arrests. <coughs> then under special interest, assault, we had none. Breaking and entering, we had one. Thefts, five. Vandalism, none. 911 hangups, we had three. Bone harassment, none. Domestic violence with an assault, there was none. Uh, we did have one verbal domestic violence call. We had three lockouts, two peace officers. We had two alarms and two assists. Just to note, uh, by Monday, March 23rd this year, two of our new car radars will need to be certified. So if we don't certify those, we'll be out of service. And that's roughly $45 for the certification, plus any parts that need replaced or damaged. So I generally try to plan um, $55, $60. I take care of the county units. Um, and you won't know what you're running into until you get into them. Generally, $55, $60 covers the rate argument. So I'll need roughly $110, $120. And that concludes my report. And if there's any questions, I'll try to answer them. Council, questions? Anyone? Questions? Yes, sir. Can I have to speak up? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll speak loud enough, I guess. <laughs> Anyway, um, how often do, you, do they do radar? You're going to have to have two certified. Um, I, don't, I never see the cars out there doing that. I, I do see them traveling. Well, our guy this weekend wrote 20 citations, and a lot of them were off of speed. So uh, if you look at our number of citations we had, uh, we had 49 stops, and there was 59 citations this year. Uh, that's two people. Yeah, I couldn't tell if that was radar right. speeding. Yeah, they, they use radar. Uh, so. And honestly, just one other, other thing. You know, I've been noticing a, a lot of information has come across the news line about um, overdoses. Is, is our officers uh, able to give that, uh, that drug? No, that's for the fire department. Uh, we don't have that capability, although we are first responders. Um, we do, we are trained to be first responders. But that's not part of it. Okay. Council, anyone else for Sergeant? Sergeant, thank you. Thank you for, uh, I have one question for you. Sure. Two deputies that we have at this time, what are their names, if you would, please? Hey, Brian Beller is one of our deputies. Brian's been up here for a few years and Dale. Again, thank you for 
their hard work and your work. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I'll pass that on. Mr. Kicko. Thank you, Sergeant. I just have a couple informa informational items under G. Uh, I just attended our TIP quarterly meeting over um, in Springfield. Your first item is the New Carlisle Pike Bridge, which is just past the, the swimming pool. Uh, I talked to the engineer, uh, John Burr, 2015 this summer. Um, they're not sure when they're going to be started, but sometime probably midsummer, and closed it down or closed it down for about three months. But right now they're work, uh, they're waiting on shipment stuff of uh, girders and things like that. Are they planning on total? Yeah, it's going to be a total replacement of that bridge. Total replacement. Uh, next item is the State Route 235 bridge by Waterdog. That will be just a uh, basically a clean and painting of that bridge. That goes out for bidding. It to me it seems probably pretty late in the fall, so I'm guessing it's going to be spring of 2016 uh, when they do that. And as far as I know, there's no closure uh, for that, but it's just painting of the structure and some uh, coating on the surface of the concrete. Thank you. And that is all I have. Council questions? Yes. I have a couple questions of the city law director, please. Mr. Nagel, Queen Creek. I've come up some, on some information that may be true, I don't know, and I'm hoping you can tell. Okay. Is the case with the Twin Creek Beats on its way to the Ohio Supreme Court? I have never heard that before, but I just came up on the the litigation brought by the Kennedy Trust has been no, I'm in talking a, about the ones that well, let me, we received and then had to go back, not the other parcels. Well, all I can tell you is, is that the Kennedy Trust litigation is in the Supreme Court, and it has been since before I was appointed law director. Okay. And nothing um, involving the reissuance of deeds is at the Supreme Court. Okay, thank you. Second question, the deeds. I understand that when they were in the city's hands at one time, correct? And they had to be sent back to the city, or back to Springfield to courthouse, correct? Because the city sold two of them. We can't hear you back here, man. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, I'll speak up. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Okay. The, the deeds were back in the city. The city had possession of them at one time, correct? Because they sold two of them. You're, you're predating me. What actually factually Okay, so you can't answer that question. I cannot. Okay. Do you know why they were sent back to the county? I don't know that, they, that the city actually physically ever possessed the deeds. Okay. So I'm unable to answer your question from that respect. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. Anyone else? Any other questions at the moment? Okay, Mr. Kitko, thank you. Appreciate it. We will now go on. That was the city manager report. Now we're at comments from members of the public. If you'd like to speak, if you let me know, and you'll need to go up to the podium. Mr. Cobb, go ahead, please. Identify yourself with your address, please. He said you don't know me by now. Yes, sir, I do, but there are people here that don't. Model Cop, 202 Bell Drive. Thank you, sir. All right, my question is here, the finance director, along with Ms. Jones, gave a report to council several times previously. We was going to be shortfall down to $195. Okay, she was involved in this. Now all of a sudden we got money, the city manager resigns, at this time, I'm going to ask council to ask for her resignation because I don't think she qualified to be there. I disagree with you, sir. She's very qualified. I've been with her three times this last week, and she definitely knows her numbers. Uh, it, all, it falls to the city manager. The city manager is the one that is actually the responsible party to bring it to us. I've used that word disconnect. I don't know how many times now. There was a definite disconnect between staff and council not understanding the numbers at that point. We've gone over them. The reason that there's more money now is because what they've done is they've cut money out of other things. They, one of the things is the finance department was going to take $30,000 to upgrade all their computers and so forth. 
They've now cut that back to 3,000, I believe, 2,000, something like that, somewhere in there. Anyway, different areas they've cut back to be able to come up with the 14,000 that we're looking at now. But 14,000 dollars is not going to last you long. 14, it, it's, a, it's always a revolving and a changing budget. It may happen that we get more money in, it's going to change. What we're looking at right now is 14,000, I gave that figure earlier, 600 and something. Uh, $14,414.47. That's what we're looking at with the budget that we're hoping to pass tonight that we have to give to Clark County. So that's where we are at this point. Okay. One of so it, it could change next week. It could be different. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say something, Ron, and to the rest of the group also. And so some people may or may not understand exactly how that 195 come up. And I think a lot of people got confused as to exactly what happened. It wasn't a case of where we come into the meeting and, and you know, the $192,000 was just flat out missing. That wasn't the case. The issue was is we cut $192,000, give or take, from the two police officers in the, in the bus. And I think when, that, when we, we went into that session, people said, well, we're expecting to see that number that we cut on, as a savings or, or in the black on, on the paper at that meeting. And so, and I was one of them. I was, I was pretty furious at the minute, but you step back and you look at what really happened. She didn't technically do anything wrong. It was the way she presented it. It wasn't that she took it, and like I've said before, it's not like it was went and spent on, you know, lavish boat or something for, you know, it wasn't missing is what I'm getting at. What she did was is she plugged that money into bills that needed to be paid or things that needed to be purchased, whether it was a, I think uh, one of them was maybe a pump for the, for the, uh, the water plant. So the, the thing that everybody's in the uproar is kind of is, is that she took that money, she put it into this fund or that fund over here to pay for certain things and services. When me personally, I think it would have been better if she would have brought it in and said, okay, here's your $192,000 savings. I suggest that we put it here, 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 here. And if we do, you're going to be left with $195 in the general fund. So it's not like she just spent it on a bunch of waste of things. It's just that she plugged it in to the budget and we weren't, I guess, ready to have that done so quick. So th that was that was my issue, but it, it really is an issue. What she did was that she paid the bills, more or less. I mean, New Kalab could come across, let's just say, for example, it comes up with a million dollars out of thin air. That million dollars could get soaked up, we all know, in two days with road repairs, water repairs. So, I mean, you know, to the $192,000 savings isn't really, I mean, it was a nice savings, but it, it doesn't go as far as a lot of people think. So I just want to clear that up, that it wasn't, that the, the $192,000 savings didn't just come up missing, like it was gone out of the budget. It just that she plugged it in, and I think a lot of us, I'm not going to speak for everybody, but me, wasn't expecting that. I think they wanted to say, hey, here it is. Now let's put it here, here, and here, if, if that made sense to you, Ron, I hope. Mr. McIntyre. To piggyback off of what Michael said, one of the things that threw me off, I can't hear you. One, one of the things that, that threw me off when we were discussing the budget, when Ms. Jones brought the budget to us, about that hundred ninety some thousand dollars that we thought we were going to have, I was under the impression that included within that budget, we were already talking about the two big, um, the, the two big deficits, the, the two big debts that we owe, and that are the debt service funds, item number 301 and 302, which are the general bond retirement fund and the Twin Creeks infrastructure bonds. I, I assume that those were all part of the conversation we were having with the budget, and that when we cut $195,000, we would have those, not, hey, we need to cut $195,000 to help pay these. And so that is where I was confused, is because I assumed these being the monkey on our back, the elephant in the room, that this was part of the discussion. But because those were being, um, those were being looked at as far as how much money the state says we owe or how much money we're going to owe or whether or not we could get the Twin Creeks issue resolved, those had been left out or weren't included as part of the discussion. And that's what caught me by surprise. Now, as far as how we had that $14,000, when we got the last budget on the first page, there's an itemized list of things that we cut down on. For instance, um, for the community cleanup day, we rent some dumpsters. That was about $2,000. That was cut out. 
the thing servers. with the, 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 the uh, servers, servers, the servers for the computers, whatever it was, uh, that was reduced. And there was a number of items. And so um, that's a public record. I don't have a copy of that budget with me now, but I'd ask everyone here who asks questions about the budget to go and get a copy of that or ask one of us and we can get a copy for you because on the very first page, I mean, you still have the full budget, the one that we're going to be looking at tonight, the full budget in there, but also on the first page it says, here, you know, based on that 195 bucks, we went back and reworked it. Here's where we cut, here's where we cut, and here's where we cut. So it's a lot easier to digest. Okay. <clears throat> Have you looked into cutting leaf pickup and... That's already been cut off. Okay. Yes, same thing. Pick up. That, that's part of what he was discussing. The same with your limbs and stuff like that? Yes, sir. Correct. One other quick question. Yes, sir. And there's a rumor going around, and i got to ask this. Is there a hundred thousand shortfall to Twin Creeks? A hundred thousand shortfall on Twin Creeks? Yep. No. I don't know what you're referencing there. But there is. Well, there's a river going around at Twin Creeks, but the city's going to miss a hundred thousand payment to Twin Creeks, or is behind a hundred thousand. That's that's why we have fourteen thousand yeah. dollars. That's one of the reasons, right there. It was one we had, we had missed it. We had missed, we had missed it earlier, right? There was half. There was basically a half payment made at the last year, the end of last year. The, the payment for Twin Creeks was made, and it was made on time. I can't hear you. The payment for Twin Creeks was made last year. Okay, it was paid on time. The only, it's a budget problem. The appropriations, that the budget that we worked on last year that was presented is supposed to have money in the general fund to hold the transfer into that checking account, so to speak, the twin creeks, okay? That wasn't in the budget. We made our payment, so the miscommunication on the money wasn't in there to move into that fund, and it's very difficult to explain. We have to catch up this year to put that money in that checking account, but we basically paid our debt. Our debts, all our debts were paid this year. We started out with three accounts in the negative, and we've got them all caught up. But we have this year in the budget, we had to make room to make that amount to put in that fund to cover what we paid last year and to cover what we have to pay this year. But the actual payment was made. It was not late. We don't owe the payment. It's just a budget moving the money from the general fund to support those payments. It has to go into its own account. And, and it is confusing, but it's paid. I want to make that part. I mean, there's, there's different stories going around. Absolutely, I've been hearing okay. them. And I base everything what's taking place here, and said here, and then oh, I don't want to say it. M Mr. Cobb, the everything's in the open. You can look at anything you want. We're not trying to hide anything. There's no missing money. Just to verify everything. If well, I'm not, any I'm not accused going of on. being crooks here. Don't get me wrong. I'm not accused of that. No, I didn't, I didn't take it that way. I'm just <coughs> wanting to throw that out in general. The other thing is we're audited by the state every year. Uh, the auditors are willing to help us at this point also because they've read the things in the paper. We have to pay for an audit. There's a possibility we may get an audit that wouldn't cost as much this time around. That's a possibility. But again, that would help us on funds. I mean, but it's it's all available, every figure if you wish. I'm sure Mrs. Harris would be happy to sit down with anyone if they'd make an appointment. If they have a question, she'd be happy to answer that. She's very knowledgeable. She knows what she's doing. Again, it was a miscommunication. We didn't understand what they were trying to tell us. It's what I think happened. All right? Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Yes, sir, please. Go ahead, ma'am. Or ma'am, I'm sorry. <laughs> Beg your pardon. <laughs> my, my glasses are fogging over. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I, I'm trying to ask a short answer question. Would, would you mind no. your name and, and address again? Pardon? Your name and address, please. Oh, Nancy Luvanovich, 505 Pease Drive. Um, basically trying to get some short answers. Is it too early for the June uh, yard sale to get any specifics on it right now? The June what, please? The community yard sale. Yeah. The community. It's tentatively scheduled to start June 20th, and that's probably when more likely it is going to start. How, how soon would you have some answers like, uh, are there going to be any fees or what kind of 
We're going to be taking a look at that in April. Okay, so it's too early. Mm -hmm. uh, Speedway is growing. Um, I know because the lady that lives behind them is being moved out. And I was wondering if the one across the street that they're, I'm sure they're going to close down would be a good spot for the Taco Bell. If we could pursue that a little bit. Um, then I, if I didn't we could answer that based on what you just said. Again, I think our planning director could let you know on that. Taco Bell is moving forward. I mean, excuse me, Speedway is moving forward with the redevelopment project. Uh, right. They have bought out some citizens' house, and you'll be seeing some activity here coming up, uh, especially in the form of a planning board and boarding zone here. Um, with that being said, we don't know the long-term plans of Speedway for that other, for that other location. Okay. We don't know if they're willing to sell. Um, but now it's not in the, now in the open. I did recommend that as the top location for Taco Bell. Good. But we also, when we had a meeting with them, I specifically asked that if they were going to close the other, and we were told at that time, no, they were not. Oh, really? So they, okay. they kept a lot of that track. You'd be surprised how much having one on each side is really beneficial yeah. to Speedway. Well, I hope so. Anyway, uh, I didn't hear, and it might be my hearing, on the New Carlisle Pike Bridge closing for three months. Yes. It's a complete closure, so we're going to have to go around it. Right, the county will make up a detour when the plans come out, and I will share those or some way or shape or form we'll get those we can out. And have our little green light, red light. Um, no, be. it will be a. Com I don't think they're doing one side and then the other. I think it's a complete tear out, and they'll be detouring maybe the Funderburg, okay. um, Milton Carlisle Road. Okay, great. And um, are we going to have to wait to make some real solid plans to get solvent for? this new city manager to come in, or are you guys going ahead with uh, some of the plans now? We'll be interviewing, which is what will be happening, and we are solid. We're just, funds are low, and the one fund, the one fund, the general fund, okay. all the other funds are fine. It's the general fund that we're having a problem with, but they have been cutting things, and we are solving. Okay, well, I didn't mean we were going to go, you know, belly up totally, no, but that's not a lot of money to me. No, it's not. All right, thank you. thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else? Yes, sir, please. Name, name and address, please. I've just got, I don't care about your money, I don't want to hear about it. It says, this lady, Jones. May I please name and address? Wendell Page, 516 North Church Street. Thank you, Wendell. Thank Appreciate you. It. Okay. I watch the news, I read all the papers, and I go to a Studebaker, so you want to find out everything you want to know. <laughs> and you just, okay, this lady. Oh, I'll tell it, you get nothing but the truth at Studebaker. Oh, right? yeah. That's right. This lady, Ms. Jones, who resigned, all the papers, all the news, everything says she resigned under a hostile environment, right? Well, is it that, going to that ever was her be made, to us. Is it going to be ever made public? what the hostility made this woman. 17 years is a quarter of your life. You don't give up 17 years unless, you know, something is, but will it ever be made public? Well, or is it say will it be made uh, public? Secret? I, I read her resignation. I know, I know that. But if she quoted and said she retired under hostile. If you were here at the last meeting, I was not. There was some hostile here at that point. I know. There were people asking her to be fired and so forth. Uh, she's had other comments directed to her. Her health is suffering stomach-wise and so forth because of those situations is what I understand. Uh, I regret anything of that happening with her. Uh, she's, she served the city far and above in my estimation. She's been here a long time. Yes, she has. She's done an excellent job. She had the welfare of the city at heart. There's no doubt in my mind about that. That's it. That's reasonable. Okay. Anyone else like to speak? Yes, sir. Let Tom, would you go ahead, please? Name and address, please. I just call him Tom. That's what he needs to go. Uh, Tom Allender, I live at 610 Terra Court. Uh, if she retired under the hostile and her health, why are you going to approve her unemployment? Well, if she has that, bad health, she shouldn't be getting unemployment. That is something to be determined. Council hasn't, hasn't talked on that yet. 
It's, and you're going to report to us what you find? Well, it'll be public. It's all public knowledge. It'll be public knowledge. That's my question I had. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? And Bill, go ahead. Name, name and address, sure, please. Everybody knows Mr. Tuck. <laughs> William Lindsay, 314 North Henry Street. To answer some of the questions, I was one that was here at the meeting last two weeks ago. I was one that was probably a little hostile towards the city manager based on what I read in the paper about us having $195 in our budget for the end of the year. And I will say, had the finance director been here that evening, I would have called for her, her resignation or her dismissal also. Hearing what I've heard tonight, I know ultimately it falls to the city manager, but I'm wondering if maybe she did not explain it correctly to the city manager, or maybe she did not you know, uh, understand it properly to relate it to you guys. The, uh, I have a few questions. One question I have is, uh, is regarding, regarding pay. What fees does our law, law director charge us? Is that an hourly fee? Is she on a monthly wage, salary, so to speak? Yearly salary? How is her compensation derived? Again, that's public record. Would you mind answering that? I think Colin will probably have to answer that. I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay. That's Colin. When I was appointed, I can't hear you. When I was appointed, yes, there was a contract approved. It okay. sets forth an hourly wage, or okay. rate, an hourly rate, excuse me, okay. that is billed at point, uh, point one of, of an hour, six minutes at a time, mm -hmm. and bills are rendered monthly. Okay. Is there, there is, I am not an employee. Okay, thank you. I was not aware of that. I thought you was, as with everybody else so, up here. <laughs> so no benefits are being paid to our law grant. Exactly. Not okay. okay. I'm on an as-needed basis. Okay. Uh, what type of things? I mean, I was looking at this uh, payment schedule here. She received over fourteen thousand dollars in February. Can you elaborate what type of things you did to acquire that amount of pay in a month? No, not sitting here. The bills are public record. They need to be redacted to retain the city's attorney-client privilege. Okay. And if they're desired, they can be requested. Bills, you said? Yes. Your bills? Yes. Okay. And they would be redacted, correctly? They would be redacted to retain the attorney-client privilege. Okay. Well, just to let you know, she has been involved and she's trying to catch up on many things that the has been let go uh, for the city. So okay. she's they're in a catch up mode at this point. Okay. That okay. that explains a lot right there. She could have said that if she so desired, but she didn't want to. Makes me think what is she hiding? If she won't she, answer a simple question she, that you answer. She's not hiding a thing. Okay, well, no one is hiding anything. Okay. None of these seven up here, all that staff, no one is hiding a thing. Leave. The the uh, one of the gentlemen got up here and made a comment, I think it was uh, Mr. Cobb, about the hundred thousand uh, dollars. he related it to Twin Creeks. I had heard a rumor also, you know, you eat at certain places, you hear things. Uh, <laughs> I heard it was now $100,000 in the hole, but you got a $14,000 black line there. So I would say that was a bad rumor, correct? I, I think you could probably hear a lot of rumors exactly. going around Nucleau, whether you're at Studebaker's or <laughs> other places. Exactly. Uh, I do have a question for the fire department. Okay. Uh, Chief, evening. Sir. I'm a retired firefighter. So I know a little bit about how a fire department runs. Uh, I guess one of the questions I have is, do you live in the city of, or in the city of uh, New Carlisle? I do not. Why? Because when I was hired for that job, I did not live in the city of New Carlisle. Okay. And there's no residency rules here? No. no. Okay. There is, but not for him. Except for council. Why? 
I didn't write the charter, sir. Oh, okay. <laughs> but the charter, I mean, the charter I mean, you answered, all, so that's why I was asking why. No, I mean, the charter the states that all councilmen must be residents of the city. Okay. Right. That does not state that the city manager or anyone else. Has it. Right. What about uh, captains, lieutenants, assistant chiefs? Where do they live at? Uh, they're from various places. In New Carlisle? Some are, yes, some are not. So if we have a major catastrophe in this town, we have a chief that lives how far from here? 30 minutes? Uh, I live in the city of Troy. City of Troy? Okay. If you come out 41, you get here pretty quick. Uh, we have, uh, I don't know, where the captains live? Rumor has it they live up north. I have two that live in the Graf. Okay, they're married, correct? Right. Okay. Uh, how many assistant chiefs do you have? Two. Why? Just curious, why do we need two assistant chiefs in a town of 5,500 people? 56, 51, I'm sorry, I, I corrected myself, sir. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of an inside joke with uh, the one council member and I up there. He corrected me last week, and uh, I added one to his number because I figured he was off at least by one. <laughs> But anyway, back to the uh, serious question. Why do we have two assistant chiefs uh, when, you know, we only have 5,600 people in this town? Well, when I took over as chief, I inherited the two that I have. Okay. But as things progress through the system that I wanted to get in place, that is something that I'm looking at for this year, trying to decide whether that's something I actually need or not. Operationally, I don't believe that I need to, but... We'll wait and see. I mean, if we had a, if we had a town of 100,000 people, I'd say, yeah, you probably could use two assistant chief. You know, one would be a battalion chief. Right. One right. would be your assistant, basically. Right. Uh, the, uh, your budget, uh, you made a comment earlier that it comes from levies and right. voting and stuff that we all approve. Right. So are you uh, a company by yourself or are you a city department? Well, I'm classified as a city department, but my funding is separate from the city. So the city council members up there, them seven gentlemen up there who represents this entire city and all these folks out here has no control over your budget or what you do with that budget, correct? Uh, there is control, yes. It's you more like of an advisory position than anything. But basically you can do whatever you want with whatever money you have. Essentially, yes. Hmm. And nobody up there of you seven finds a problem with that? Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Go ahead, John. But he can't spend the money. He can't. He, he only has authority to spend X amount. $55,000. Is it $55,000? Without an approval. I brought that up two $55, years ago. $55,000 that our no. chief can spend. I, I, I remember because I brought that up two years ago with, with, before when right, Chief right, Tracy right, was right. here because I had questioned about the original truck because the Jeep was dying and then the Jeep still runs. Sure, sure. So, okay, well, so, so he only has the authority to spend that, that amount of money? Oh. Yeah. Well, I know. <laughs> I know. So anyway, that's, that's his authority, but he can't, you know, he can't go out and buy a fire engine without our approval. 55,000 wouldn't buy one. I hate to disappoint know, right. you, sir. I know, but I'm just saying that, you know. It might be a good down payment on the back half of one. <laughs> That'd be about it. Down, <laughs> yes, considering they cost about 250 to 300, 400,000 dollars. Mr. Williams, uh, it's Mr. if I Lizzie, may, we sir. have a five minute limit. Okay. And that, that is. Council controls that. It's right. in our rules of council. We have a charter that we have to adhere to, and we have rules of council that we have to adhere. So you're a little over the limit. So one question, and I'll get done. Okay. Do you seven have the authority to change the charter? No. 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 The Who has that authority? You, you do. You guys. We do. You do. Yes. So it, but any charter changes would have to be put on the ballot. Yes. yes. Correct. And they were. Thank you, sir. And they were. They were. They were just Real quick, they were on the ballot this past, what was it? 2013. 2013, and, every and uh, the citizens had voted it down. And I don't, and I don't remember the exact yeah. changes, because, I mean, it, it was, was a while just, ago. I think like Mr. Cook's words. here. How often is that done, Mr. Cook? Ten years? Every eight, eight years. Eight? Eight years. Mr. Cook's been on that committee before. Every five years. Why? We have a charter review committee. Okay. They bring forth the changes that they feel are in the best interest of the city in the charter. They are given to council for their approval. They have the right to change any of those or to delete any of those. They are then placed on the ballot for all of you 
to move it for. Right. The last issues were very, I will say, cognitive in what changes the Charter Review Committee requested. Those were voted down. Again, there's a lot of times that we bring up the fact of language. Changes in technology are things that need to be brought into play. In regards to one of your questions about residency, there is nothing in the charter that requires any employee of this city other than those people sitting mm -hmm. up there to be the residents of the city. I know that. I've read the charter. In regards to the chief, he did inherit two assistant chiefs. That had been the way that had been over X amount of years. I spent 23 years on this department. There was a chief operational over fire, a chief operational over everything. Okay. At that point, we worked on minimum wage. Anything else I can help you on the chart? I think you've done a marvelous job. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. sir. That answer your questions? Yes, sir. Okay. I wanted to see if he had a question for me. He's raising his hand. <laughs> no, I was just going to comment. I've, I've actually been part of that process three times. And I will agree with Mr. Cox. There have been very minute changes or suggestions that have been made, and rarely do those even pass when they're put on the ballot. So, so if you're asking if the charter needs review, that's left up to the citizens. I mean, that's your call. Whenever you you know when you think that's necessary. So then, what would be the process to get something to the review board? And it comes back to another question that I asked earlier, that you seven gentlemen up there do have control over that charter. Because this gentleman here told me that anything that came to you guys for your approval for the voting on could be taken out if you didn't like it. And usually I've been on council for the last one or two times, I believe, and there haven't been any changes from what the citizens wanted. And again, okay. you get to vote on it. The citizens okay. have to vote on it. Okay. Okay? I think but I, my point is... Hang on a minute. Mr. Reynolds, I ahead. think I hear what you're saying. We have the Charter Commission every five years, but we also have the ability to do a initiative or referendum as well, which applies to the Charter. So if you want to go out and petition and write up some legal language saying that you want this to be this or this to be that, you can submit the petitions. I don't know how many signatures it is, but... We petitions. have the ability to do petitions and referendum are separate are separate from changing the charter. It says charter referendum though that you can petition to change Ref the charter. Refer referendums changed already voted on legislation. The petitions would well initiatives something though for. is to change something that's already right. referendum is to withdraw something. Initiative is to establish something. So, but. Hi, right. thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Anyone else? Mr. Williams. Terry, I'd love to hear from you. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Anyone else? Anyone like to say anything? Again, thank you everybody for being here. We really appreciate it. We'll now go into uh, resolutions and ordinances. And if you would, uh, Mr. Collier, go ahead, please. Ordinance 15-10, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the leasing of Gasineau baseball field property of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, to the Diamondbacks Adult Baseball Club. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Make a motion to adopt ordinance 15-10. Second. Any comments? Yes. Who, who said yes? I did. Okay. Yes, Questions? Go ahead. Mr. Alexander is in the office. Or he is, is, here. In yes, the office. is May I yes. talk to him? Sure. Where are you at, Bob? Going back. Why? You've done an excellent job out there with that field for I don't know how many years. And, uh, you know, I'm just curious, you uh, know. He's not giving it up. Is it? I uh, have a zero off the price. I have it for three years now. And I can't take care of the building. Okay. Uh, so, sorry to hear that, Bob. Uh, you know, I know the Diamondbacks first. They're very frank. He loans the Diamondbacks. Mm -hmm. I know they do a great job. The transition, you guys go to do that. I'm going to help make the transition. See if you groundskeeper get all the information that I have. You know, how to take care of it. Thanks for everything you've done down there. I know one person's going to be very happy you're not there anymore. Jody. His wife, that's right. <laughs> but, but, yeah, yeah, 
Because she, she told me Bob lives and breathes baseball. But anyway, thanks for everything you've done now, man. That great was always been beautiful. I know you had to fight the weather and everything else. So thanks for being Bob. I'll piggyback on that. And uh, one thing I want everyone to know that uh, Mr. Alexander has been given the key to the city for all of his hard work making that what it is. It's a field of dreams. You've done a great job there. Thank you so much for that. Did anybody else like to say anything here, please? Just thank, thank you, you for all your hard work. Thank you. Call for the vote, please. Mr. Zambach. Well, uh, I vote yes, and again, thank you, Bob. We do appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? I miss seeing you down here, Bob. Yes. Mr. Craybacher. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Absolutely, and thank you for all the years. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Passed seven to zero. What a great attribute for the city that is. Can I make a comment on that? You certainly may. As, as someone who uh, obviously played baseball at Tecumseh High School back in the days, a lot of people here can remember those days when Tecumseh High School played all their games there and how much work was put into the, keeping that field up and, and how much how good it made me feel when the first time I rolled by there and saw the improvements and the, somebody playing there, it brought me back to the way it used to look. It's, it's excellent. And it's a great landmark for the city. Uh, it looks a lot better now than it did oh, even absolutely. then, that's for sure. Well, they, you can, they got better things to take care of it now. Amen. So. Yeah. Amen. 7-0 pass. All right, if you would go on, please. Ordinance 15-11E, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight, an ordinance to establish appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio, State of Ohio, during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2015, and declaring an emergency. Mayor. Yes. Motion to adopt Ordinance 15-11E. Second. You want to explain a little bit on that? I'll just give a, a small uh, sure. piece and then I'll let Colleen finish up. Uh, just uh, and if this ordinance is the uh, budget for the whole year. Um, we have a temporary appropriations in um, that's been approved that expires at the end of March. This will override that uh, budget and then carry us through December 31st. Um, as you're well aware, this budget, as we've talked tonight in previous meetings, will continue to evolve. Um, for if the budget does not pass, um, it the basically expires on the uh, 31st of March. We will have to obviously hold all the special meetings and stuff. But I just want to say that um, you know it'll still be working even after it's passed. Those figures aren't set amounts. And then I'll pass it on to Colleen for any questions uh, regarding the body of that ordinance and the budget. Do we have any questions for the? I I do. Um, <laughs> The, um, I know we've, we've mentioned several times tonight that budgets evolve, they're living documents, so to say, that we may get more money in or we may have to spend more money on something else. And um, so based on that, if we want to change a certain amount that we spend here, this isn't set in stone, this is something where we say, hey, a piece of legislation comes in front of us, a piece of legislation that's announced for everyone to look at, and we decide, hey, we want to spend money on this, or we want to cut spending money on that, and everyone can see that process, it's, um, that would be something that would come up in a regular vote, which is announced in the newspaper, and we can get our input. And so any sort of amount of money that we spend future or things that we cut, uh, the public will have the ability to have an input on that, and they'll be made aware of that. That is correct as far as the budget process goes, even though we're voting on this tonight, the send of the state. Is that correct? And that is correct. And, and again, to let everybody know, we basically take our best guess of what we feel our obligations are, what our expenditures are going to be from year to year. That's an appropriations budget. That's our expenditure. Then we look at what revenue we're going to have to work with, and we go with history. And it doesn't really come into picture until you close the end of the year to see how much money you still have left in your checking account. It kind of works the same way. You can bring that forward. We did get information from the auditors that our revenues were going to be reduced. So we had to go back and change numbers. We've worked this budget more than probably a half a dozen times to try to get the main expenditures that we have obligations for within what we feel our revenue is going to bring in. 
that is the budget we have to give to the county. We have to show them that we are not going to spend more than what we have available. That's what we're doing. Now, this money comes in from January 1, and it still comes in from December. Expenses come in January 1, and they still go on to the end of the year. So it is a, a moving and evolving budget. If we find additional revenue that we want to put over to something, maybe something breaks, the, some of the capital that we had to take out of our budget, we might need to put in. Yes, we can. We come back to you. We come back for approval. We also have to show that we have that extra money available. And then it goes to the county. The county also will send us two, maybe three notices a year if their taxes that they receive for us go down. We have to adjust our appropriations again. So it's, it's just a very difficult thing, but this is our base, this is our guideline. This is what we feel with our best um, information in our meetings that we can pass and work this budget. Hopefully, we're still trimming and hopefully we get a little bit more in like the income tax and then that will help us to recover. But right now, it's an ugly budget. Nobody, I mean, nobody disagrees with it and it's gonna be very difficult, but I think we got everybody working on communications and on the same page. We're all here for the same result. Thank you. Anyone else? Any questions? Yes, Mr. Craig. Okay, just a couple. A couple things about this budget that I like and I don't like, okay? And what I don't like is naturally the swimming pool. We have budget of $81,000 for this new budget. We have $81,600. Yes. No, no, that's in the budget, yes. Right there. Right, but it's budget. Colleen. No. I'm telling you, it's wrong. Putting the oh, pool. If that's wrong, then that's, then this budget is wrong. Go ahead. Hey, don't argue that. No, I won't. No, no, you're right. It's on. It's All right, let me, let me find the page so we can go over and get, get that question John, answered. Page 36. It is Thank budgeted, you. but we page 35. Only put in 39.6. Right, that's what I'm getting at. If, if we open up the pool. <laughs> it's put in 39.6. Wages is $44,000. Go ahead, Mrs. Okay. Harris. Sorry. On page 35 is our revenue that we estimate for the pool if we open the pool up. Right. Um, and then you've got history there. You've got what I'm estimating for 2015 right next to it was our actual for 2014, 2013, and 2012. So if you go in line, the total is $81,000 we are estimating as revenue coming in. Next page, page 36 is your expenditure. And the expenditures are 81. Now the difference is the very bottom, the transfer in of 39,600, is what we feel the general fund will have to go over to make that balance to zero. So it, we're taking money again out of the general oh, fund, it's in, putting yes, it over there. 30, 39,600 was put back in as your request, and it's in the transfer on page 11. Last. That's in there, and that has to come out of the general fund, and that is some of the money that brings us down to that $14,000 ending. Okay. And that's if we, you know, those are estimations on weather and revenue and expenses. So what's 81000 What's 81000 It says right there on the bottom line. That you go to the, you go bottom to. Bottom line, you know, total strength equals 81000 Which page are you on again? Page 36. Six. Okay, on bottom 36, line. bottom line is our mm -hmm. estimation of our expenditures. Okay, the very first paragraph is your labor. 44,937, then you got your contractual, which is your gas, your electric, your, your uh, maintenance of facilities. We estimated that at 20,000. And going down through the office supplies, the chemicals, concession, all the costs to operate the pool, we're estimating will run 81,600. Actually cost us 80,000 last year. Now you look at the revenue, the revenue is only looking at after the 40, 39,000, about a $40,000 revenue. That's what we got last year. So the general fund already has a transfer set up in the budget to cover the difference, to make that balance. Okay, no. does that help answer? No, 30,000 is 39,600. 39, still coming from the general fund Absolutely. to feed. Absolutely, the, if you want to open the okay. poll this year. If they, last year we only made we made forty thousand three hundred and sixty six, and we covered the rest in the by the general fund. the general transfer. fund, and the fund we're having trouble with is the general fund. Thank you. You're hey, anyone else? Anything else? Uh, would you like to say something more? On the pool, I, I think it'd be a good idea if you would let that out. Please. Okay, I'm 
probably one of the biggest supporters of the pool out of these seven people. There's some of us up here that don't want it to be open. Some of them do. I will fight tooth and nail for the pool until it comes to the point where she tells me if we open the pool, we will for surely be in the red. I mean, that's just a no brainer. But the way I see it is, and a lot of people have, have just burned this city for the matter, and I've said this numerous times, for the Madison Street School problem. It sits there, it's an eyesore, it brings down property value in that area. If we close the pool, it's never gonna open. And therefore, it's sitting right in downtown New Carlisle, and it's gonna get vandalized, it's gonna get spray painted, it's gonna be another eyesore, just like Madison Street School, in my opinion. This isn't them, this is me. And I don't want that on my hands, and I, it's something that needs to be here for the kids in the community. With the pool not being, we voted to keep it open a few, I don't know, a few months ago. Uh -huh. And with that being done, I personally started going out and just, you know, putting a few bugs in, in some people's ears, business, businesses' ears. Uh, Western Clark County Business Coalition was one of them. I'm not going to go into the others. To get support, uh, you know, uh, Scott Griffin runs Western Clark County Business Coalition. He runs many businesses. You know, I think he would be an asset to come on board and look to see what ways, and he's, he's given some ideas along with Valerie Herdman of how to get the, cool, the pool costs down and get it to at least break even or not lose as much money. We've come up with a lot of good ideas, and I think it would be fair to give it this one last year, one more push behind it. And the next year, if it loses thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 plus, you know, and that's what I said when I voted yes, I'll vote to close it. But, I'm going to, me personally, I'm going to put every effort I, I have behind it to get that pool to at least come close to breaking even and not losing money. Um, like I said, I had a lady actually call me today, I'm not going to give her a name, called me and told me she would donate $300 to the pool, which $300 is not a lot when you put $39,000 into it. But I think if we get people that truly utilize the pool, I don't think people would be against trying to help out and pitch 10 bucks here, $20 there, or to see if there's services that we can provide with the pool to, to bring in revenue and, and get the attendance up. I mean, I know we can't control the weather, and if it rains, it rains, no one's gonna be there, but uh, th that's just how I feel. I, it, it, it continues to go forward and it opens. I'm gonna do everything I can personally to, to keep it open and work with the businesses, community sponsorship, whatever it may be. Western Clark County Business Coalition has done a lot of good things in town with the farmer's market. Maybe that can transfer over to their success into the new collapse pool. I don't know, but that is how I feel about it. Uh, again, yes, go ahead, Mr. Rawls. Uh, I voted to close the pool. I'm going to vote no on this budget because the pool is included. $14,414.47 is not much. If we have another big storm like we did in 2012, it cost us $11,000. Uh, but we got reimbursed the problem is that money still left. Uh, and you say, like, Pools shut down, they don't reopen. The Logan City pool shut down in 2007 and reopened in 13. It's a good article in the Columbus Dispatch. 82% of municipal ran pools have closed between 2007 and 2015. Current up to date, Upper Arlington, one of the wealthiest communities in the state of Ohio, opted to sell their pool to a private individual. They're, they're bulldozing it and they're building a water park. And I agree with what the dispatch said. People are no longer going to small pools, they're going to Kings Island and these massive water parks, and there's one in Tip City, one in Huber Heights, and one in Troy, and one, now one in Springfield. So, Mr. McIntyre, go ahead. Mr. Yeah, I, um, when we originally had our, our budget discussions a while back, um, I was one of the people that was very much against the pool, or, or at least looking at the idea of maybe cutting the pool. Um, since then, I had a lot of people come up and talk to me about what the pool means to the community. Um, I had everyone from parents of young children to World War II veterans saying that it would be awful to close the pool because what it what it means. And um, based on that, we looked at the budget and we had the manager of the pool come in and give us seven different action items on how we could save money. And so I looked at this and like Michael said, I want to thank you, Michael, for, for going out and, and being proactive and trying to get money and trying to find ways to, to keep the pool open. That's certainly above and beyond anything that I've done or that most of us here have done. So I want to thank you for that. And on top of that, if we can if take Michael's efforts as well as implementing the different action items that we got from the pool manager, I'd say that we could give it a year 
and look whether or not we can keep the pool going. If it's not going to work, it's not going to work, but we've got a couple different solutions, a couple different things that we could try out, and I think we owe it to the kids to give it at least one more shot. And that's why I changed from being against the pool to being in favor of, of giving it a second chance. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. One more thing. I want to comment on what you said, Ethan. I'm a city council member for the city of New Carlisle, not Springfield, not Huber Heights, or Columbus, or Columbus, or where Kings Island is, or where the water park is over there. I'm not going to tell anybody in New Carlisle to go spend their dollars in another city. That is just irresponsible of city council. You need to work your tail off for what you believe in, and that's what I'm doing. Thank you. Uh, I have a comment. Our staff over here, when they were doing the budget, desperately wanted us to close the pool because they knew that we were going to have to put money into it. So I just want everybody to know that the staff worked their tail off to try and convince us to, to go ahead and close it this year because we did lose quite a bit of money. We voted on it. We passed it to keep it open one more year. Uh, I voted yes to go ahead and keep it. I've had a lot of people again, as Mr. McIntyre has had, come up to me and say thank you for keeping it open. If it does not, I don't want to say make a profit. If it doesn't be close to breaking even or $10,000 even in the red, I would be for closing it down. We're going to give it one more try. There are people that are working on it to try and come up with money, uh, try and sell more tickets. We have a lot of people from not just New Palau, but around the, the area that does use the pool. Park Lane closed theirs a long time ago. Uh, so that's, that's where we are at this point. We're trying it one more time. But again, I want to stress that our former city manager, as well as our uh, finance director, were adamantly against us keeping it open. But we went against them at that point. So that, that's where we are with that. Uh, any other comments, anyone at all? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, um, I won't go into detail about it. I was dead set against it. Uh, and I also had people call me and talk to me. And I do believe strong quality of life for a city. If you have nothing here to offer, you're going to have people turn around and leave, and they will go elsewhere. I think of the kids. I don't want them roaming the streets, not having anything to do in the summertime. And I'm with those people. I think we need to leave it open one more year. Uh, Valerie, the manager, sat here or stood here and told us that she had things that she was going to get at. And I looked at her and I said, Valerie, this should have been done a long time ago. Okay? And it should have. But nevertheless, I think it needs to be for one more year for the kids. If it doesn't work even, then it is time to close it and shut it down forever. But I do believe it deserves the shot. I looked at these kids right here and I saw you shaking your head. Apparently, you want it left open. So, and I don't know where I've never seen it anymore. That's not fixed, but um, the kids got to have something to do in this town, not uh, you know sleeping in the park and doing things they shouldn't do and all that. Kind of stuff. You need to have something to do they shouldn't do. All right, we all set. Anyone else? Anything? I just want to let everybody know that we're we're still on our ordinance. It's a uh, again, it's an emergency ordinance. For an emergency ordinance, we have to have five votes, five positive to pass. Six. We need six. Need six. I beg your pardon, I stand. I thought it was five. Six votes for an emergency. So that's why we're working on the night. Again, this ordinance is for the budget. Hold, 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 hold. Can you check on that first? I did. She did prior to the meeting. Because there was one emergency ordinance that did not pass one time. And that was a deciding vote. It was five. Did we have a council member missing at the time? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. Remember that last time? Mm -hmm. What section? We all think it's five. Uh, what section? Uh, I passed it. You did. I was going to do it. It was. You did. I'm sorry. I put it somewhere. You failed something. Those guys, you were gone. No, 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 that could be wrong. I'm pretty sure that's fine. Yeah, I remember that. I wanted to clarify. I wanted to make sure. Folks, if we could hold it down, please. I know you like to speak, but she's trying to find out for us so we can go forward here. Emergency ordinances are addressed at section 4.15. Sorry, Lynette. 
I'll just, uh, it's just, it's a paragraph. I'll just read it so okay. everyone can be on the same Please. page together. To meet public emergency affecting life, health, property, or public peace, and to provide for special emergencies in the operation of a city department or agency, the council may adopt one or more emergency ordinances, but such ordinance may not levy taxes, grant, renew, or extend a franchise, regulate the rate charged by a public utility for its services, authorize the acquisition of real estate, or authorize the borrowing of money except as provided by section 7.09b. No emergency ordinance shall be subject to, the, to initiative or referendum. An emergency ordinance shall be introduced in the form and manner prescribed by ordinances generally, except that it shall be plainly designated as an emergency ordinance and shall contain, after the enacting clause, a declaration stating that an emergency exists and describing it in clear and specific terms. An emergency, emergency ordinance may be adopted with or without amendment or be rejected at the meeting at which it is introduced, but the affirmative vote of at least six members shall be required for adoption. After its adoption, the ordinance shall be published and printed as prescribed for other adopted ordinances, shall become effective upon adoption or at such time as it may specify. An emergency ordinance may also be repealed by adoption of a repealing ordinance in the same manner specified in this section for adoption of emergency Thank you so much. I have, a, I have a question for Ms. Harris. If this budget doesn't pass, what, what happens? That's the question. It is our legal obligation to stay within, okay, as we talked about. If it changes with expenditures that we have to come to council with or revenue, but you're approving this base budget. When we get inside the 47 pages, we manage it, okay, all those line items. But you're approving the general fund. He says, what happens if it doesn't pass? What happens if it doesn't pass? Yes. We don't go to work April 1st. OK? That's that's my best guess. Is I can't, we can't run without a budget. budget. We're on what a we, temporary budget. budget. What we would have to do is uh, go back to the budget, work numbers more to whatever that bottom dollar black level would be, and set a special meeting for another emergency ordinance, um, get it advertised as long as it's into the county by March 31st. So today's the 16th. Yes. You want to be able to get Everybody understand what we're doing, Council? What, what we're doing? Are we ready to go forward? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Collier, if you call for the vote, please. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Kraybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Absolutely. We need to keep this community going forward. That's for sure. Mr. McIntyre? We can always revise things later. Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? No. Pass six to one. Thank you. Sorry, okay. I, I had to. <laughs> other business. Is there any other business this evening? Anyone like to say anything? Out here in the audience, anyone like to say anything other business? I have a question. Would you mind going up? Alvin, would you go up to the uh, sure. podium? Sure. Name and address, please. Um, Alvin Quitterball, 201 North Scott. Uh, you guys, I, brought to my mind about the pool because uh, you guys are that's the whole issue um, and it was losing 7,000 gallons a month is my understanding the city doesn't have to pay itself for the water to fill the pool right that's no. not part of no. correct you know, okay so all the the, the wa whatever we lose is not like on the books it's just gone we, we counted as a uh, uh, accounted for water loss in our water utility. That's all I have. Thank you. Appreciate your comment. Anyone else on the audience? Mr. Cook, go ahead, please. Please, your name and your address, please. Bill Cook, 302 Zimmerman Street, Never Loud. I've had several people request information in regards to uh, charter review. 
We just had one, and I would say it was within the last two years. Normal circumstances, this is every five years. The city normally advertises for people to serve on that committee. This is not a very easy process. And probably as the law director would tell you, that we have our present charter that we have to go by. We have the Ohio Revised Code that we have to go by. There are certain things we can and cannot do within that charter framework. I, along with Mr. Collier, have served on quite a few of those charter review committees. It's, it's, it's something that everyone should take a stab at serve on one, and I'm sure that uh, any of those of us that have served on it have found it to be a rewarding situation. The other thing, yes, can I just interject? How difficult is it to get people to help serve on boards for the city? Very difficult. Matter of fact, the same Charter Review Committee has probably been comprised of 50% the same people over the last three to four that I can recall. I'm sure there are vacancies on boards of the city that anybody can serve on. All you have to do is volunteer. Again, council has the right to either accept or reject any of those recommendations that we put forth as a charter review. However, I will say this, I don't believe in my time of serving on any of those, council has rejected any of the issues no. that we have brought forth to them. I would strongly recommend if anybody wants to serve on a charter review committee, leave your name with the city, or I'll be glad to take it. That doesn't mean I'm gonna serve on the next one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Williams, would you like to speak again? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I want to clear one thing up. My name is Mr. Lindsay. My first name's William. I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. That's I what I want, said, Mr. Lindsay. I wouldn't want it quoted on all these newspapers. I see people <laughs> write. I, don't know I, mean. uh, I forget which one of you gentlemen up there mentioned about the pool and the water parks around town, around the other cities. Would that be a possibility to convert that pool, sell it to a private investor or somebody, let them build a water park to remove the pool in another year or so once you find out that it did lose money again? It's just a comment. Oh, go ahead, Randy. I'm sorry. Oh, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry. I don't go ahead, please answer <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody would kind of look at the pool and have a, a profitability if they know it's been leaking money since then. And even if they do put a lot of upgrades in there and upgrade the facilities, you're still looking at a population density issue. Right. We don't have that many people to support a water park like Huber Heights has or Springfield has. But the, the idea behind it, I'm thinking, is the people from Park Lane would come up here. They, they might, they may not. Um, well, I'm, I'm thinking they could be closer than Huber Heights. Well, it depends where they live in Park Some Lane. Some do already. Let, let me just say, it was in the <laughs> paper. It was in the paper that Huber Heights lost $147,000, $48,000 last year yeah. on their facility. Springfield, their facility, they lost, I can't remember the figure. It was fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 that they lost also. So every pool last year that's opened around our area lost money that I know. But if, if we wind up losing, say, $40,000 on the pool again, which I think that's what we lost last, last year, am I correct? Uh, what would, you know, for $40,000, they could probably fill it in, make a nice park. <laughs> I mean, you know, then it only has to be mowed, you know, a couple of times a month. Surely it wouldn't, you know, lose $40,000 doing well, that. Well, approach yeah. that after this year that you've heard. Yes. So after this year, right. if, that's the, if that's what the problem is, it will be gone. You can bet on that. I just want one more thing, and I'll shut up. Uh, I know you guys have a hard job up there. I want to commend all of you for serving, taking your time out of your life to do this, because I know it's like a four-and-a-half-year stint. Some of you have been here for a while. 
Same way with these people over here. They all, you know, do the best they can. I think they've done a pretty good job. Is there room for improvement? Absolutely. If you can't improve, something's wrong with you. That's everybody. I, do you not agree, sir? We always try to improve. Okay, thank you. <laughs> the, uh, I was going to pick on you, but I'm not going to, I'll do it after the meeting. But uh, that's all I got to say. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Lindsay. Anyone else? Can you go back to the podium, please? Lubanovich, 505 P. We have a hard time hearing you up here. Nancy Lubanovich, 505 P's Drive. Um, I don't know how many people know it, but when you su suggest the shelter house, you should really let people know how inexpensive it is, how great it is in the summer because it's air conditioned, and in the winter it's heated. It's just a fantastic place to have your family reunions wedding uh, receptions, anything. So you might want to pass that along to everybody because it's great. Thank you for saying that. We appreciate that. Yes, sir. I just want to put some information out there. This weekend, you'll see uh, Eagle Scout and one of our members uh, starting to work on two. Uh, notice that we don't have any barbecue grills around the, the par uh, Smith Park. Um, the one that's right outside by the bike path is, is uh, corroded and it's pretty much gone. But an Eagle Scout has installed two of them. One will be right here by the bike path. You'll see white stakes there. There'll be a concrete pad, a picnic table, and a barbecue grill. Uh, and the Eagle Scout is obviously doing his portion and stuff, and we're assisting. The other one will be over by the open shelter, uh, right at the far corner. It runs along the parking lot. Uh, same, th same thing, barbecue grill, picnic table. Uh, and those will be started this weekend, and then probably being poured and finished up, hopefully within the next week or two. Thank you. Appreciate that. Anyone else? Anybody else like to say anything? Again, thank you all for being here. We appreciate it. We'll go on now. Would you mind reading, Mr. Collier? The city offices will be closed Friday, April 3rd uh, for Good Friday. Uh, there will be a joint government meeting Monday, March the 30th at 6.30 p.m. at Tecumseh High School. That, that meeting is open to the public. Thank you. And there's a uh, wrong date on the agenda. The Crime Watch meeting will be Wednesday, April the 13th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. Thank you. Council, anything else? Paper in it again. Please. I think to go to the New Carlisle License Bureau to get them. We need the numbers up so we can keep them in town, okay? And I'm gonna tell you this every other meeting to remind you to go there so we can keep them in town. We do not want to lose the license bureau. I don't need to go to Springfield to stand in line for an hour and a half to change over the title or get a set of license plates. Thank you. Great. You might also mention that they do give out uh, information on survey that you go online and take. You are absolutely and they right. Take that into consideration that is absolutely right. Fill out the survey and tell them how great they are and how quick they got in and out. So appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Appreciate that. Anybody else? Anything? Council? Okay. Executive session. We have an exec executive session tonight to consider the temporary appointment compensation of a qualified person to act as manager and to consider the appointment and compensation of a manager for a definite or indefinite term. Uh, Nice question. What, one second here. Okay. Uh, if additional business is anticipated after the executive, executive session uh, will be held, as far as we know, there will not be. Yes, sir. What is it you'd okay. like to say? Um, and I'll ask this of our law director. This entire council has always talked about, and I know Mr. McIntyre champions this, about transparent government. Is there any reason that that we cannot consider that in open session? We want to talk about. We have to go into an executive session for this. I see no reason for that. I don't know why it cannot be done right here. As long as people sit here agree that they're not going to jump in young Madison Street and just listen to it. I, I, I just have, oh. Mr. Zambach first, then we'll go to it. Yes, sir. When you were at your personnel interviews at General Motors, did you hold Mountain Park with God and everybody there, or did they discuss your employment circumstances amongst only the appropriate okay. people? I was in private, but there's a difference there. These people are going to pay the wages. The, 
peers that I worked with did not pay my wages or my salary or my benefits. State and federal law both extend to protect employees, public employees, and private employees' personal information. There are more protections given to public employees than there are to private employees uh, in some instances and not in others. Uh, the reason the open meeting law allows for these matters to be taken into consideration in private in executive session is to protect those privacy interests. It would be my recommendation to council that this be conducted in private. The ultimate compensation, uh, if, if you are to um, award someone the position and have compensation, once you determine that, uh, it's the factors that go into it that I recommend be held in confidence in executive session. And then the ultimate um, compensation package, because it is a public employee, can be known by the public after it is decided. But in taking into a person's uh, qualifications and different requests, those, I recommend that that be done in executive session, and that's why the law allows for it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Anything? I move we adjourn to executive session. Well, we don't adjourn. Yes, we just, Mr. Mr. Well, Mr. Mr. Zambach, could you say one more thing? Could you just say motion to adjourn in executive as written? As written, yes. Yes, okay, on the agenda. Second. Okay. Okay, we're going to take a 10 minute break and then we're hey, going we, to go into we, 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 we have to wait. vote. Oh, I'm sorry. We have to vote first, please. Sorry. Uh, right, we're going ahead here. Hang on, folks. Might as well down. One more minute. Uh, I had a motion by Mr. Zambach and you had a second. Okay. Might as well just vote it now. Almost. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Craybach. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Pass seven to zero. Thank you. Now, we are going to take a 10-minute break.